Oh hey y'all, welcome back to Fatty Supple Hints, the show dedicated to helping you learn games good. And today we are going to do the top 7 advanced tips for Ark Survival Evolved. And now this is not going to just be like a basic tips video, you know, this isn't going to be end game, how do you grind and go crazy into it. This is just going to be, you know, the players that have been playing Ark for a while that aren't necessarily like a mega tribe that have a bunch of people that really just want to kind of get going, as well as kind of dispel some myths I've heard a lot of and kind of clarify some things that work on console and not. So uh, let's just jump into it. Coming in at number one, this is going to be about harvesting tech dinosaurs. Now, a lot of people are really starting to get into farming these tech dinosaurs to really get a lot of elemental dust and kind of, you know, build up that element supply and element shards and stuff like that. Now, with Algaro kind of being the new popular map, even though there's going to be a brand new thing dropping today, I'm 99% sure there's been a lot of leaks. Anyways, focusing back. Uh, I wanted to kind of dispel some myths and see really how to get the most bang for your buck out of this. So I did a lot of uh, testing. I did it mostly on the Stegos. You know, if you use whatever dinosaur, you're going to get a little bit more. I had some Tex T-Rexes I, I tested off camera, and it really wasn't that much more of a yield. Also, the Parasaurs weren't that much less of a yield in any way. So really, any of the tech dinosaurs are going to get you about the same. So Parasaurs probably are the easiest just because they don't take as long to raise and get up. Now, what I really found out that I heard the biggest myth was was with the HP. Like if you had a, a dinosaur, a tech dinosaur with a high HP that it's going to yield a lot. And that is absolutely false. You know, I, I, I tried it with a, a lower level one that had only like uh, 390 HP. And then I leveled one up crazy on a boosted server to like over 18K. And they both yielded about the same. Then I did one uh, that was tested. I leveled up with 150 levels, you know, I, I leveled up everything about 15 or so. You know, I, I, I threw some in there, and again, nothing really made a huge difference. Now, the only thing that's going to make a huge, 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 huge difference is how you harvest it. You know, some dinos will harvest a little better than others, just kind of depending, but if you really want to get the bang for your buck, chainsaws. Chainsaws will give you the most amount, and it is just ridiculous how much this will actually yield you for your tech uh, farm. So definitely use a chainsaw, and I would recommend using a parasaur to really, you know, utilize the most out of it. Now one of the miscon misconceptions when it comes to the the tech harvest I think where people think that boosting health will really make a difference about how much you can harvest comes from the Orvis. Now when you uh, do slaughter them you know you can have them in and you actually go up to them if you're holding a pickaxe anything like that and you get the option to actually truly slaughter them. If they do have a higher health they will yield an incredible large amount more. But that does not work with other dinosaurs in other situations. Just to know that it works with Orvis, not with tech dinosaurs. Coming in at number two is going to be some myths and dispelling about the Magnemer. Now, that is by far my new favorite dinosaur. It is, if you're anything into PvP or even PvE, really, you got to have one of these guys. It just saves you so much time. It's not technically a flyer. You know, it's kind of like a, I think they call it in like the code, it's like an ice jumper. So, you know, it's just jumping around. But it is just incredibly fast to get around the map, um, as most of you know. Now, the thing that I, when I was planning this video that I was going to show you guys, um, just kind of doing some research online and playing a little bit on PC, um, but I mostly play on Xbox with like friends and stuff on dedicated servers. But um, what I did find is that there there is a misconception that on every platform, the Magnumer, or the, oh my gosh, I just butchered it, and I just looked up how to say it. The Magnumer, Magnagermir, Magnagermir whatever, the Magnum um, is that you can hit players off of their mounts with uh, the dive attack. Now, on PC, 100%, this works. I've tested it on PVC or PvP servers, and it works great. Now, when I try to do this on uh, Xbox, so I could not hit the player. I tried this for several times with just a stationary player on a, a Tyranodon, and nothing. I could not hit that player. Now, I could blast him with the Ice Blast and knock him off instantly without any trouble. But when it came to the actual dive, it did not work. So you have to really be careful when you're looking up information, whether the information is good about um, PC or consoles, because this is going to be kind of a big th topic in this video. Um, so yeah, just know that if you're on the Magnumer, you can bla ice, blast blah, 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 ice Blast players off their dinosaurs, or you uh, on PC can actually dive and hit them off and Ice Blast them. So just be aware of that little change. Coming in at number three. 420 is the magic number. Now, before you guys get any assumptions on what I'm meaning by that, just know that the maximum amount of fall damage you can take at any given point in arc is going to be 420. So I did a ton of extensive uh, testing on this just because I really wanted to to know. You know, I jump off of cliffs a lot when I'm like running from somebody. I, I'm not a big parachute fan. I always forget to make them, bring them, whatever. So I always make sure I have at least 440 health because if you're dropped off from any heights, 
you know, you're falling from anything, it is going to be for 20 damage. Now, the interesting thing about this is absolutely really nothing is going to affect this. Any kind of armor will not protect you from any kind of environmental damage. You know, I'm counting fall damage with that. All of that will just bypass your armor. It doesn't hurt it. It doesn't affect it. It just, you know, bypasses it. It goes directly to you. Same with, like, you know, um, on Aberration, like the spores and different things like that. That directly bypasses your armor, as well as, like, you know, environmental factors like heat and whatnot. Uh, running out of oxygen underwater, different stuff like that. Also, uh, another thing people kind of questioned is uh, the fortitude. Now, fortitude will help with uh, some of those other environmental ones, uh, such as the spores and um, temperature and stuff like that, but absolutely will do nothing to help you with your fall damage. None of your stats are going to do anything to really negate any of that fall damage. So like I said, 420 is the magic number. Coming in at number four. Now, this one, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I just wasn't aware of at all. And that is going to be beer. Like, I knew that was added to the game. It was around the time the Calicotherium was added to the game. Um, and it was primarily for taming that. You know, you could drink it. You would be a little silly. And it was fun. I remember me and my buddy Orange, we used to uh, have an arena for drunk boxing. And it was hilarious. It was good times. But what I, I don't know when this was added. And I need to do a little bit more research about that. But they've added a 40% damage reduction uh, for a minute when you drink a beer. And that is amazing. Um, when I did testing, it worked out more 50, but I'm sure like with higher numbers, cause it was only doing eight damage and I was, you know, receiving four when I drank the beer. Um, I'm sure that will change and it will actually truly be 40 like I read online. Um, but it, that's, that's incredible. You know, if, if you're looking to, you know, soak up some damage or you see like an enemy player coming around, that's a great thing just to have and kind of pop. Now the, the downside of it is you're going to lose all stamina regain for two minutes afterwards. But to be honest, most PvP fights don't really last that long. You know, if you're going to go in and you're just kind of suicide running in with, um, you know, just to soak up a couple bullets because of whatever, if you only have a couple turrets, that's going to, you know, almost double the amount that you can take uh, right there alone. So that is really useful. Um, you know, it's it's probably more well known than I knew, but I've been playing Ark for years and I did not know that. So I'm going to throw this one in there. Coming in at number five, I want to discuss the Snow Owl and the Daedon. I have been reading just a bunch of random stuff online about how much it does uh, healing-wise, how it's effective, what you need to do to make it more effective, and I've been seeing just a lot of, just a random there. So this is my personal testing that I did. I'm just going to say, you know, take it for what it is. Uh, for Daedons, I did testing in a previous video. I'll try to remember to link it in the description below. But basically, it, it's 10% of its maximum health. So whatever its maximum health that it can have, it's going to heal for 10% of that. So when you are leveling that, you know, a Daedon for healing, you know, I always have at least two in my base for when I'm hatching new dinosaurs or, like, I'm creating raid dinosaurs and I really want to, you know, boost their uh, health up like crazy, I always use a, a Daedon. And that's going to be, like I said, 10%, and then it just drains your food. So boost health a lot and boost food some you know they actually gain food pretty quickly and you can always go in and force feed them as well so that's going to be good now the snow owl absolutely unequivocally does not matter how much health it has it seems like a pretty base rate now i did a lot of testing again i i leveled one just kind of like the the uh the stegos i leveled one with just hp um just to see how much that would affect it uh, then I leveled uh, one, not at all, just to see what it would do base hatching, and they were very similar levels. And then I did a test one where, again, I, I put about 15 points into every stat to see kind of how that would work. And I, it came up to about for a 10 second healing time, uh, on average, about 1400 uh, health was healed. But that doesn't matter. Like, it really, it was a less than a 60 HP difference. And that difference could honestly have been. Um, my time taken to go to the Parasaur, check the numbers, write it down, go back to the Snow Owl and do it. Um, as well as the not leveled Snow Owl, um, you know, it ran out of stamina before the other ones did because I didn't level any in its stamina. Um, so that did kind of affect it a little bit. So, but the whole point is it's pretty basic, you know, one fully leveled all HP, one leveled pretty evenly throughout everything and one not leveled all did about the same. Coming in at number six is going to be the horse lasso. Now, I know that's not anything new, groundbreaking, but it's something that is extremely underutilized, especially for taming. Now, with Valgiro kind of being the new popular map right now, it's it's just the one that's right out there. There are Orvises everywhere. You know, they're they're not that difficult to find, um, especially if you can like want to breed them or anything like that. But what I really found out is, you know, horse is great for knocking out. You got the kick as well, and you just got the speed and the stamina to really kind of move a far distance. But what's really nice is when you have that lasso, you can find an Orvis and you can hook it and you can bring it to your tame and just hold it there alive for a long time. Now you can lasso um, smaller dead dinosaurs. You can't do anything like 
even a parasaur size. It has to be like kind of smaller than a parasaur. So that's not really anything that's going to yield uh, primate, anything great for uh, taming. Now, if you're taming something at a lower level, you don't really care about having primate or mutton, that's going to be fine. Um, but if, if you are caring about it and you want to have that mutton, you know, the best that you can have without having kibble, what you want to do is lasso that Orvis and kind of carry it around with you, bring it with you, because it's not going to attack you. It's not going to do anything. So you can really just kind of hold it there for a long time. And, you know, even if you build a little pen next to your tame, you know, as one person's kind of keeping an eye on stamina, you can just kind of keep grabbing a couple of those Orvises, bringing them in into like a little gate and just letting them out. And then they'll just stay there and you can harvest them as you need. Coming in at number seven. Now, this one is definitely not the most groundbreaking one by any means, but it's going to lead me into another talking point. Now, this is going to be the defense dinos. And this is any dinosaur that you can really put a platform saddle and build around. Now, it's not 100% effective, but you can build like little cages kind of around parasaurs and quetzals that will negate some of the bullet damage. Definitely by no means all of it but some of it. Now, the reason why I really put this in as number seven, because I usually do only five talking points, but I had a number six that I kind of wanted to throw in here, but six is an awkward number, so I wanted to do seven, and this is going to lead into the surprise box. Now, I have another video coming out, which is going to be amazing, and I'm going to live stream it, so look at for my Instagram with all the information about where to watch the live stream and the exact date that it's going to be happening, because I am going to do a live dodo raid on camera. So in this clip, you can see that I had a parasaur that I was using as one of these defense dinos filled with dodos that were like level 350, so like max, I... Like, it is just insane how much of these dodos I bred. I bred over, like, 350 of these bad boys. And they all have, like, 20k plus health. It's going to be a great, great time. So look out for that video. And that is why number seven is going to be the Defense Surprise Dino Mystery Box. It is going to be amazing. Look out for that video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys your support. This channel, after I just hit 1,000 subs and got remonetized, has started blowing up. The algorithm has picked me up. I'm getting about like 14K views a month right now. And the subscribers are growing up. So thank you for all the new people because I have recently just gained a bunch of new people. So thank you for all your new support. Um, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out my Instagram. I like to post little funny videos and stuff like that, update on videos that I'm actually trying to make in ARC. And as well as don't forget to leave comments down below what you guys want to see. You know, I've been primarily uh, how-to uh, tips, tricks, different stuff like that, taming videos, whatnot. Um, couple time-lapse speed builds, not, not too many of those. But let me know what kind of content you guys want to see. Now that we have a bigger, bigger channel, I want to get more videos out there that maybe require less research. So what do you guys like to see? Do you guys want to see quick raid videos? Do you guys just want to see little Let's Plays? You know, leave a comment down below. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.